Hey everybody, welcome back to Whispers of Myth, um, where we dive into some of the most fascinating and mystifying stories out there. So today we've got uh, a truly incredible story. Um, it's about a little boy named James Leninger, who believes and convinced quite a few others that he's the reincarnation of a World War II pilot. So I guess settle in as we unravel this astonishing tale. So James's story uh, starts when he was just two years old, um, in a peaceful home with his parents, um, Bruce and Andrea. But things took a strange turn when young James uh, began to share some vivid details uh, about being a pilot uh, in what he described as uh, the Corsair, uh, which is a famous World War II fighter plane. What kind of airplane is that? It's a Corsair. His parents, Andrea and Bruce Leiniger, say from an early age, James would play with nothing else. He was obsessed with airplanes. So, now remember, this is a toddler we're talking about. Um, hardly the age uh, when you'd expect someone to start recounting past life experiences, right? Uh, or is it just me? The details uh, that James shared were not just generic, they were specific and very complex. So he talked about um, flying in aerial battles um, and the most really heart stopping of his memories was actually about being shot down by the Japanese. But then when he was two, the planes James loved suddenly began to give him frequent and frightening nightmares. I'd wake him up and he'd be screaming and he'd always be laying on his back, kicking his feet up at the ceiling. And I'd say, baby, what were you dreaming about? And he'd say, airplane crash on fire, little man can't get out. So the plane, the environment, the mechanisms, he described them with precision. And uh, it actually startled his parents quite a bit. So, I mean, initially Bruce and Andrea were quite skeptical, as any of us would be. But uh, they weren't particularly believers in reincarnation or really anything of that sort. But as a curious parent would, I mean, they started digging into the history to find, you know, what, a, what kind of explanation for their son's knowledge. You know, why would he, why would he be thinking about this? I talked to my mom about it a lot of times. My mom had said maybe he's remembering a past life. What did you say? Uh, politely, baloney. You know, having a past life is not the initial conclusion that you come to. You try and figure out any other way he could have. Did he see anything? Has there ever been anything on television, anything that we've discussed? Here's James at age three, going over a plane as if he's doing a pre-flight check. He would continue to say and do things that were puzzling, like the time his mom bought him a toy airplane. And I said, oh, look, there's a bomb on the bottom of it. He said, that's not a bomb, Mama, that's a drop tank. A drop tank? I did, I'd never heard of a drop tank. I didn't know what a drop tank was. And here's where it gets even more weird. Um, as they researched, they kind of stumbled upon the story of a World War II pilot. His name's uh, James Huston Jr. Uh, he died in a battle uh, when his plane was, was hit and ultimately it crashed. So the parallels here are quite eerie. Um, the, more they, the more they dug into it, the, the more they found that the details uh, young James was actually recounting about his previous life really, really closely matched uh, Huston's life and his experiences during the war. His parents say between the ages of two and four, James would reveal extraordinary details about the life of a former fighter pilot, mostly at bedtime when he was drowsy. Bruce said, um, what happened to your plane? He said, it crashed on fire. And Bruce said, why did your airplane crash? And he said, it got shot. And Bruce said, well, who shot your plane? And I'll never forget the look on his face. He went, oh, the Japanese. When little James would describe being shot down, he told of how his plane had sustained a direct hit on the end. We had an airplane, and I said, well, can you show me where it was? And he, he pointed right up to the front of the engine. Bruce had always said, what kind of plane did you fly? Yeah. And he said, a Corsair. Yeah. He uh, said a Corsair? He said the word Corsair. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not only did James remember flying a Corsair, he demonstrated knowledge of the plane's peculiarities, like the time he was flipping through a book about planes when he was four. And he got to the Corsair and he said, that's a Corsair. And he goes, you know what? They used to get flat tires all the time. In fact, historians and pilots agree that the plane's tires took a lot of punishment on landing. 
Of course, this is a fact that could easily be found in books or on TV. But then, James began to offer up the kinds of specific details his parents say are harder to explain away. Another night, Bruce had come in and he said, do you remember where your plane took off? And he said it took off of a boat. Do you remember the name of your boat? Natoma. Do you remember what your name was? And he'd always say, James. But his name is James. It never it really occurred so to us. Like, okay. We thought he just wasn't understanding the question. So I said, do you remember any friends or anyone else that you flew with? And he said, Jack. Jack Larson. Bruce began doing some research. Almost immediately, he discovered that the Natoma was an actual ship, a small aircraft carrier in the Pacific called the Natoma Bay. And Jack Larson, the Navy buddy little James recalled? Well, it turns out there was a pilot named Jack Larson who served aboard the Natoma Bay. In fact, he's alive and well and living in Arkansas. Bruce turned to an aerial photo of the Pacific Island. James was seated nearby. He pointed to it and he goes, Daddy, that's where my airplane was shot down. And, and I said, what? It's, that's my airplane got shot down there, Daddy. So um, how could a two-year-old in modern America um, know such detailed information about a pilot's life and death in the 1940s? Um, that was the question that really baffled everyone, so including skeptics and experts uh, in the field of reincarnation studies. So this wasn't a case of a kid overhearing something on TV um, or picking up pieces from overheard conversations. Uh, these were detailed, accurate descriptions, really detailed, um, of a pilot's life during the war. Um, and it matched with specifics that were not easily accessible or even well known at all. They haven't had the cultural conditioning the layering over of experience in this life so that the memories can percolate up more easily. These memories tend to fade between the ages of five to seven. We are taught from a very early age in this culture, in the Judeo-Christian culture, that reincarnation doesn't exist. Once you observe this in a child and the evidence is very compelling, you have to open up to another explanation for what is going on. So the story um, sparked a lot of interest, uh, a lot of debate. Um, it's been thoroughly documented and really discussed pretty much all over um, in books, the internet, uh, TV. So for those who believe in reincarnation, I mean, James's story is, you know, seen as a compelling piece of evidence. Um, Myself, I'm a believer in reincarnation, so to me, it, it kind of works the same. It does challenge um, skeptics quite a bit um, and invites, I guess, countless questions about the nature of life and death, um, memory, and, um, you know, perhaps the continuity of the soul or the Atma. So for Bruce and Andrea, I mean, this journey was really weird, um, really transformative for them. Um, so what started as this baffling curiosity about their, their son's nightmares and playtime stories, it actually led to an exploration of a topic they really never expected to delve into. Uh, it changed their perspective, um, and I think it's changing many others as well. So what do you think? What do you think about James's story? Um, is it possible um, that he's being reincarnated? Um, is he the reincarnation of James Huston Jr.? Or is there another explanation? And if there is, um, what is it? I'd like to know. Um, you know, put it in the comments um, what you think uh, about reincarnation or what you think about this story in general. This past October, the Leinigers received a letter from a woman named Anne Barron, the sister of pilot James Houston. Andrea and Bruce had contacted her about their little boy. Barron heard about what young James was saying, and she believes. All of this is still overwhelming. I can only imagine how it has affected you, but I believe with my love to you, Anne. The child was so convincing and coming up with all these things that there's no way in the world he could know unless there is a spiritual thing. Anyway guys, um, thanks for tuning in to today's story and if you liked uh, this deep dive into the mysterious and the unexplained, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks a bunch, guys.